PFL season is here, 2024, week one. We've got the heavyweights and the women flyweights. And Jim, I think the theme this week in PFL and UFC is line movement. Yeah. What is what is going on? So we're going to break down these fights, and we're definitely going to go over these lines because we've seen some absolutely bizarre lines. And uh, when we put up the UFC video after after weigh-ins, we're going to have to go over those lines because there have been some doozies. I do not remember a week like this, so yeah. um, it's it's really strange. So for everyone who doesn't really follow PFL like you and I do, do you want to give a quick little synopsis as to what PFL does and what this week is? So PFL is a tournament style company. So they run a tournament. They have their list of, I believe, 16 fighters uh, that are in in each division. So they'll usually run two weight classes per show. You know, this week we have the women's division. We have the men's heavyweight division. Um, They'll have some showcase fights mixed in there of guys that are not quite in the tournament, but ones they want to showcase. Uh, As the season goes on, all hell can break loose with injuries and replacement fighters and who wins this now the key is the point system with pfl the earlier your finish comes the more points you get so six points is the max if you get a first round finish you get six points if you then get another first round finish it goes based off of time so points are at a premium finishes are put an emphasis on they're at a premium you do not want to go to decision but you also want to get out of this fight unscathed because guess what? You got to fight another fight coming up really soon. So it really is a grind. It, it is undoubtedly the toughest uh, MMA tournament on the planet. Um, you got to give these guys credit. It's a it's a busy year. You're going to fight four times, you know, if you want to get to the finals. Um, but it's fun, man. A lot can happen. I like it. We can talk a little bit later about it because I know everyone wants us to break down the fights. But I think if you're going to try and compete against the UFC, this is kind of how you have, you have to do it. You have to do some kind of different format. You just can't be like, well, we're like the UFC. We just put on fights. I love the tournament style. Mm-hmm. And you're right. We'll get into some of the, the thinking. You, you, you have to understand the tournament before you can really get into handicapping the fights because mm-hmm. there is extra motivation. And as you'll see in the future weeks, you have to know what the points are. You have to know this guy needs <laughs> yeah. to finish. This guy just needs to get out of it without hurting himself. This guy is locked into the, fu- you know, to the whatever, the playoffs. So he's not going to be you – know, he's just trying not to get hurt. So there's a lot going on. So let's just get right into the fights and – uh, we'll start with some of the feature fights. Bryce Meredith, Ty Johnson. Uh, the lines tell you this is a Bryce Meredith uh, steamroll. Uh, do you have anything amazing to say about this fight? Minus 1,600 on Bryce Meredith. Well, the only thing, uh, it, you look, Bryce Meredith is a, a very decorated wrestler. He uses his wrestling in the cage. Um, hasn't had the toughest uh, strength of schedule, being 5-0. and It's somebody that they've looked to build, uh, build up. Um, Ty Johnson, one of uh, Lucas Brennan's uh, training partners. Um, pretty good record on a hell of a streak, questionable competition, I would say, questionable organizations, I would say. We could also, we we also want to make the case that a lot of these guys, especially in PFL, we're going to be able to say weak competition. Yeah. These are guys that are not making it to contender series even yet. So, Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you got some. You got some questionable <laughs> fighters. On the, the only card thing here. I would say, this is undoubtedly, I believe, this is Bryce Meredith's toughest fight to date. Should he win? Yes, he should win. Um, but these guys size up really well. None of neither of them are over the hill. They're not throwing him a tomato can. Um, but I do expect Bryce Meredith's wrestling to come out top in this situation. Um, I think he's smart enough to not get caught in a triangle, and you always bet wrestling when you're betting against just a grappler. Wrestling usually, you know, comes out in the end. Uh, Bryce Meredith is the pick. Lucas Brennan, this one we're going to have a little discussion on. Mm -hmm. Lucas Brennan is minus 1,600. You and I love Lucas Brennan. He's fighting journeyman Dimitri Ivey. If you haven't seen Lucas Brennan, I mean, before his last fight, man, it was, dude, the guy is nonstop energy trying to get mm-hmm. to the back, trying to get the submissions. You love Lucas Brennan. You've made a lot of money betting on Lucas Brennan before he was off of everyone's radar. So give us a little background on Lucas Brennan, and then I will jump in and tell you why I'm just a little worried about him in this fight. 
So Lucas is a second generational uh, MMA talent. His father, Chris, was a UFC fighter years ago. Um, very decorated black belt. Lucas is, has grown up in the MMA world. Um, very good wrestling. Extremely good grappling. His submission game is top-notch. The guy is just a spider monkey. Um, really, striking is coming along, but he's, he's smart enough to know that he needs to lean on the wrestling. He's just a dynamo, this kid. He has so much room to grow. He's got the right size build. Um, fun fact about this is that they asked him to be in the tournament, and he said that he wasn't ready to be in the tournament because he doesn't think that his body can do the weight cut over and over and over again. So that was a pretty interesting interview that I heard regarding that. Um, I really think he's, he's just growing. He's growing. He started off as a baby. You know, he was just saying his, his first amateur fight when he was a minor at 16 was in this arena. So, I mean, the, the kid's been fighting forever. Um, yeah, I, I just think he's, a good, he's the goods, man. He might have a little stumble along the way, but this is most certainly uh, a Aaron Pico, a homegrown talent that they are just trying to build and build and build, and he's getting better as they go. Funny you bring up that there's a stumble coming. Um, I think this might be it. Um, okay. So I will talk about – actually, I'm going to go back to Lucas Brennan here real quick mm -hmm. uh, to tell you why I'm a little bit worried about him. So these guys are not going to end their careers undefeated. We already know that. Um, just the rear naked chokes in round ones were really, really impressive. This guy immediately gets to the back. I love mm -hmm. that he doesn't screw around for the most part. This fight against Weber Almeida was – a little bit concerning because Almeida is not a chump and we saw um, a, a very big lack of striking defense from, from Lucas Brennan. He got, he, he was hittable in that one. And I thought that that fight looked very similar to uh, Biagio Ali Walsh, but they mm -hmm. said, you need three rounds of cage time. Uh, you, you need to, you know, mix it up. He gets credited with a knee finish, which was awesome. I it mean, was. that was a <laughs> knee from hell. Uh, it, was a, it was a beautiful clinch knee that just came right up the gut and um, knocked him out. I'm concerned about Brennan because he's 23. And this Dimitri Ivy, this guy's been around. He's 12 and 7. He's got 19 fights, 34 years old. He has fought not great competition here. Um, he gets knocked out by Carlton Minus. If you remember, Carlton Minus had a little UFC stint. Uh, it did mm -hmm. not go well. This fight against Lorem Estevez was really, really interesting to go back and watch because it was a grapple and submission attempt fest. And Estevez just could not get Ivy out of there. And Ivy goes and fights this Abe Sellers guy, you know, by F FC, whatever. <sighs> Ivy's, Ivy's not going to get steamrolled by Brendan, I don't think. I think he's going to test the chin. I think he's going to land some punches. And I worry that if they tell Brennan, like, you're not going to go try and take this guy's back in the first, thir first 30 seconds. You need, you need more cage time. I think he gets popped a couple times, and I think this is way too big of a price for me to lay on it. Like, if you're trying to get these guys like Biagio Ali Walsh and Lucas Brennan cage time, you can't tell him, like, go in there and take the guys back and choke them out in 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. it, it really it doesn't do much to further their career besides stat pad, and that's not what they're in there for. So I think the price is way too steep. Brennan's going to lose sooner rather than later because the step up in competition. Biagio Ali Walsh is going to lose sooner rather than later. I worry that Ivy catches him on the chin, and all of a sudden we got a very dicey situation. So... I will not be having Brennan in any parlays and a sprinkle on Ivy right now is like almost 10 to one is not the worst bet in the world for me. Well, all good points. All good. Very, very good points. Now we spoke about this earlier and you voiced your concern. So I had to go down the rabbit hole a little bit and, and see if what you're saying, you know, everybody was picking up what you're putting down. Um, I heard a great interview with Lucas Brennan, especially at a, specifically about that Weber Almeida fight. He was extremely disappointed with that performance. I mean, you could, as soon as he lands the knee, he wasn't happy at the post press conference. He was not happy in his recent interview. He was not happy. They went back to the drawing board with this and acknowledged that a, he said flat out, I was very disappointed. I did not push a better pace. I was holding back gas because I was concerned 
come round three. And he said, as soon as the fight was over, he was like, man, I could have went really, really harder and stronger, which is a scary proposition for a guy like Brennan if you've seen him fight because it is high-paced grappling out the gate. Um, so that's good for me to hear. I want to hear that. I want to hear that you going to a decision and getting being down 2-0 in the scorecards going into the third, he was, um, that you knew you messed up and you had to yeah. make some adjustments. Um, so I really like where his headspace is at. I watched Ivy and I just, I don't see, if this does hit the mat, it's going to be Brennan. It's going to. Absolutely. Be. Like, it's it's going to be a rear naked choke. I mean, Dimitri Ivy lost to Jesse Butler, who we just saw Jim Miller just put into orbit. <laughs> I mean, not a good look, not a UFC caliber fighter is even, you know, just not impressed with the level of competition. And I feel like Brennan is growing into his man body. I think this will be a better Brennan that we'll see. Great camp mentioned that he's training with Tim Elliott, who's now in that camp. I mean, if you have a guy to train with as far as grappling goes and high pace, Tim Elliott's a great tutor for this kid. Great yeah. tutor for this kid. Um, so I don't want to go on too long about this, but I like the improvements that Brennan's made. You can't play him now. I guess you play him by submission if you get a prop, but other yeah. than that, you can't do anything with it now. Yeah, it's 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 fun watching these guys kind of evolve and kind of watching their careers get going. So um, mm -hmm. we know there'll be stumbles along the way, um, but yeah, uh, should be should be fun to keep it keep your eye on Lucas Brennan, twenty three years old in four or five years. This guy's going to be winning this tournament. Oh, yeah. Like, like, he gets his striking a little bit better. He's going to be winning this tournament. So. Chelsea Hackett and Jenna Bishop. Uh, I'll let you go first. Uh, both of them are kind of grapplers, kind of <laughs> wrestlers. I mean, Jenna Bishop's she's in a gi. She's in a gi. <laughs> so we know, she, you know, that kind of says a lot. What do you make about Hackett and, Je and uh, Bishop? Uh, thank, thanks for giving me this one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the main event, Jim. You take Yay. this one. Uh, Chelsea Hackett is, is not a fantastic fighter. We've seen her on Contender Series. We've seen her in PFL. It's just not been impressive. A, uh, a loss to Victoria Leonardo is not a good loss. Uh, she beat this girl, Kai Bennett, in her last fight by Rene Cacho. Kai Bennett's got no business being... Uh, it was obviously a builder fight for, uh, for Hackett. Now, if you go on the other side with Jenna Bishop, the one thing that you do have is you have pedigree. Uh, she is a world champion grappler, and she's been doing it for a long, long, long time. Um, are they going to list her grappling? Yeah, they'll list her grappling fights. Yeah, I mean, it, time and it, time it, again, world champion. Uh, just fantastic ground game. Um, you know, with grappling, you have your losses and your wins. Not everybody's always undefeated, but she is a specialist. Uh, believe it or not, she's got more experience than Chelsea Hackett in MMA. Yep. How does that make sense? So I think she's dedicated. Um, they sized up well at the press conference. I think uh, we, we just went over this fight with, uh, who was our grappling specialist with, uh, shoot, it's going to, oh, uh, in UFC. Yep, yeah. And it was the girl that everybody was on and you're like, why? Yeah, oh. yeah. Dana gave her a contract she shouldn't have, and then she won like the shadiest decision mm -hmm. in UFC, and it was like, great, I cannot wait to bet against her in the very next fight. Yeah, she, she just snapped the arm of somebody a week ago. It's just, yeah, it just this is pedigree, and I think I think Bishop's a bettable price. I just don't see the improvements from Chelsea Hackett. She's more of a stand-up fighter. If this hits the ground, it's Jenna Bishop. I, I, if this hits the ground, I don't think Hackett's getting out of the round. If it's if there's three minutes to work, Jenna Bishop should lock something up. I actually think even though Bishop has the grappling edge, I think she, I think her striking's better. I, I would add that I mean, Hackett's striking is like non-existent. Like, no power. Hackett? Yeah, that's what I mean. Like even if yeah. she does hit Bishop, it's just gonna be it's gonna be a no nothing little pitter patter. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, we like Jenna Bishop in that one. Watanabe and Shanna Young. All right, here we go with the big this is big. It. The, yeah, the, here's a big line <laughs> movement. Um, when you move, when, when the line moves from like minus 300 to minus 275, I don't take pause. When the line moves from minus 450 to minus 270, that is a whoa timeout. What is going on here? Oh Watanabe was the big, big favorite. We were very excited to fade Shana Young. We still think you can fade Shana Young. 
uh, this is the the this, the the premise of this is Shanna Young um, is nine and five. She did not have a great run in UFC. She comes over, beats Sandra Lovato in one of the more <laughs> lame wins and just yeah. fights ever. And then after the fight, she says, "I got my CDL license. I'm a truck driver now." Um, and yet, money and line comes in, and I don't get it. Uh, Watana B should be better. The grappling and ground game should be light years ahead. I mean, mm-hmm. she loses a split decision to McFarlane and then Carmouche. Which she won. <laughs> I will never <laughs> let that be say that that was a loss. Go okay. watch that fight, guys. And you tell me who won that fight. Yeah, so, then, you know, against uh, against Veda, Ar- I think it's Artiega. Mm-hmm. It was, you know, nonstop pressure. Um, she had moments where she didn't look great, but she motor that keeps on going. I don't get – all things considered in a vacuum, it's Watanabe all day. This line yeah. move, man, is just got me like it's red flag, red flag, red flag. What is your take on this fight? It's the same boat. It's just this line movement scares the hell out of me. It should be Wat- Watanabe however she wants. However she wants. She's – I mean, she's got good stand-up. It's not the best, but Shanna Young doesn't have great stand-up. She doesn't have knockout power. Um, mm-hmm. She doesn't have a gas tank that doesn't quit. She's tough. But Watanabe's wrestling is light years ahead of Shanna Young's. Her entries are fantastic. They're technical. She gets to a controlled position and stays there. She doesn't give up, you know, a position for submission. She just, excellent, excellent, excellent grappling. Tough. She's been rocked before. Got back into fight. She passes every test. They size up eye to eye. I thought uh, Shanna Young was going to have a size advantage. Shana Young misses weight by two and a half pounds, yeah. yet this line still is at minus 270. It's very, very, very odd. And that's the that's what's giving me pause on making her a parlay piece. I still think it's Watanabe by decision. Um, if I had to pick a method, I could most certainly see her grinding out Shana Young. But on the other hand, look, again, this is the PFL tournament. You only get three points for a decision. You got to go for the finish. You just have yeah. to. So. Yeah. Uh, man, it's it's going to be interesting to see what it happens, what, whether it's a legit line move or not, but I haven't been able to to wrap my head around it. Yeah, and we saw in UFC cards, uh, the, the Loopy and Jandaroba, there was mm-hmm. big steam on Loopy. That didn't work out. There was steam on Weidman. That did work out. Um, talking to you, Weidman. <laughs> uh, by the way, the nerve of that guy to post a picture of how bad his eye looked after the fight. The nerve. The nerve uh, of that guy. I've digressed. Um, yeah, the line move is just – it is it is literally the one thing that is – take us off because we're like, do they know something? What's yeah. – like, or, but, I mean, don't be surprised if Watanabe wins, but the line move is just enough to just take – go take pause and say, I, I don't I, – I don't know. I don't know. Um, let's move on to Steve Mowry and Oleg Popov. Uh, massive size. Uh you want to talk about Maori and you want to talk about pop off here because, like you said before we started recording, you're like, whoever ends up on top, that just that's fights over. There you go. So, that's what do you make at. of these two? Uh, neither of these guys have a good get up game, and they both do their best work from top position. Pop off, look, he is boring. He is boring. He is boring. Even his, his picture's sh- boring. Look at that. His picture's boring. <laughs> 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 it's just boring. Those shorts are boring. It's just. <laughs> Everything. It's a snooze fest. Um, not good striking. Not good power. These guys that he's not He's knocked out Bigfoot Silva. <laughs> okay. Give me a break. A corner. This guy, Alexandro. The guy was just gassed from being wrestled. Corner stoppage done. You know, yeah. gets a triangle choke on some guy we've never heard of. The again. Blacksmith Fight Championship yeah, just, 3. I'd have to go yeah. back and look at 1 and 2. <laughs> now, this win against Saricom was, was literally just a takedown in the first 30 seconds and hold him down. So I will say this. Um, I've watched Steve Mowry. Steve Mowry is a guy with all the physical tools, but the problem with him is he has tall man takedown defense, and he is slow. He is very slow with his striking. This is not Luke Trainer. okay? This isn't a guy who's six foot six, that's athletic, that can move. Steve Mowry is not that guy. And you would think with his size, he would have good long stand-up. 
really doesn't. It's very slow. It doesn't pull back his jab. People are able to get underneath it and get to his legs and take him down. Now, that being said, I do believe that Steve has the more dangerous, uh, from a submission side, ground game. Uh, so it'll be really interesting if Popoff can't get the takedown come round two. I, I, I firmly believe round one, Steve Mowry's going to end up on his back. He's going to be down the whole round. Nothing is going to happen. But round two of Popoff trying to move this giant body around, we don't know what he's going to look like. This is a big man, a big man. And if Mowry can make him work and somehow Popoff takes a bad shot, ends up on bottom, look out. Mowry has a fantastic Kimura. He's got great chokes. He'll move to mount. So this is a real tough fight. Um, I don't hate Steve Mowry at plus 136. I don't yeah. hate it. Will I be betting it? No, though. I will not be betting it. This is a stay away if I've ever seen it uh, with these heavyweights. This just got, it's got like gross, disgusting split decision <laughs> written all over it where you're like, well, one guy was on top but didn't do anything. And uh, yeah, I, I, I will not. This fight to go the not. distance. Would, <laughs> take, that's, take that's, the fight to we, go the distance. <laughs> we say this all the time with heavyweight fights and we never bet it and then it hits. The over two and a half, the fight goes the distance. Um, yeah, yeah, bad for sure, rates, man. <laughs> yeah, take the overs in this one. Uh, Tyler Santos gets a short notice replacement. You can get Santos at minus nine hundred. <laughs> I thought Tyler Santos was going to steamroll her first opponent. I think this one could be. She could. She could make short work of mm-hmm. this opponent. Just, just know that PFL have been working to get Tyler Santos for a while. Um, Tyler Santos makes the move from UFC over to PFL. This is a big get for PFL. Tyler Santos is really, really good. She's 30 years old. She's in her prime. Mm-hmm. She's lost two in a row, but to Blanchfield and Shevchenko. <laughs> so uh, no shame in those. And to be honest, one takedown, she ended up on bottom in round two. Otherwise, I think she wins that fight against uh, Blanchfield. Split decision against Shevchenko on short notice. Uh, Tyler Santos is going to win a lot of fights here. Mm-hmm. Um, her opponent is just not that good. I think it's just kind of, you agree, it's just Santos, whatever she decides. Santos, gonna got to go for the finish. Look, again, take all your UFC thoughts, put them out. Santos got to get the six points, okay? Yep. Got to get the six points. She doesn't get the six points. She's got to get it done in round two for five. So Santos in round one and two, I think that's a fantastic bet. If we get that line, we'll see if it comes out. You know, you're not going to get every line you want on on some of these fights for PFL. Mm -hmm. Um, But Santos by finish, great bet. Probably going to be minus 300. You could parlay that with something. Uh Every single one of Tyler Santos's opponents can win the PFL tournament from the UFC. Yeah. If you go yes. down her her roster, every single woman could win the tournament, her included. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah, imagine she, if you had even Joanne Wood. If you threw her in this, could she win the tournament? She'd Absolutely. be fine. Jillian Robinson would submit half the Everybody. roster. <laughs> PFL. Molly McCann would knock half of them out. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I, I'm with you 100. percent This is so and. and, and and by the way, PFL didn't bring Tyler Santos in to lose her first no. fight. <laughs> no. This, no, this isn't they, an old man publicity signing. This is a young fighter in her prime. Um, if you go to, to, to Joanne as well, Joanna, uh, she's been submitted. <laughs> yeah. Lost to armbar to Jenna Bishop, who we just spoke about, who's a pure grappler. She was able to get it to the ground and submit her. What is Tyler Santos going to do to this woman on the ground? She is going to run through her. Watanabe, ground and pound. You've seen all these finishes on the ground. It's the path to victory. It's Tyler Santos by finish. Tyler Santos by finish. Uh, Blagoy Ivanov and Sergey Bilost. I don't know how to pronounce the last name. Uh, here's my analysis. Over. Just go the distance. Uh, this is going to be another boring fight. Um I'm certainly not betting on even off, but I'm also not betting on this guy. If I'm doing anything, it's just taking it to the over. I, I don't, I don't know exactly what the, what the, what the breakdown of this fight is. I don't know if you have anything like amazing, mind blowing, incredible analysis to say about this fight. Uh, the only thing that I would say is that uh, you know, um, 
I don't know how to say his last name either properly, but uh, let's call him Sergey. We'll call him. We'll call him Fedor's Sergey. boy because he's Fedor's boy. Um, okay. He's got everything by finish, and look at it: round one, round one, round one. Look, he's gonna put an on Blagoy in the first round. Is he gonna have cardio in the second? Is he gonna have cardio in the third? Is Blagoy gonna just be beat to hell come round two and not be able to do anything? Love the look. Love the overlook. It is so hard to finish Blagoy. And I don't see when nobody in the UFC could finish him. Uh, that it, the you know in PFL all of a sudden he's going to be a tomato can. So they yeah. match up well too side wise. They looked right in each other's eyes at face offs. Blagoy's big and tubby, but you know hey, big and tubby gets you to a decision in the heavyweight division. Look at some of these guys that even off somehow got to go the distance. <laughs> Alexander Romanov. Yeah. Uh, Derek Lewis, tied to Avasa. <laughs> Look at ben this. Rothwell these, before he ben was on. Rothwell. Yep. Like, Dos you know, Santos I mean, in his prime. <laughs> I mean, it's just, oh, man. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, to, for Over. me, even off just, just <laughs> yeah, the guy's got, isn't he, the, he's got stab wounds. He got stabbed in the chest. Like, <laughs> yeah, you think he's like, worried about getting punched? No. He's not. Not by this guy. So, no. it's an even off fight. Taking the over. Marcelo Golem and Daniel James. Um, hey, listen. Sometimes these matchmakers got to get creative. Marcelo Golem was fighting somebody else. Daniel James was fighting somebody else. Both those guys dropped out. You two are fighting each other. <laughs> this mm-hmm. is a rematch here. Um, I'm surprised that Golm is minus 142. I figured this would be very close to even odds. What's your take on uh, Daniel James and Marcelo Golm? Daniel James missed weight. This is somewhat short notice. His original opponent. Um, he's in his 40s. Can't bet him. Okay. Marcelo Golm. Great skill set. Horrible chin. Absolutely. Horrible chin. This fight already ended by knockout once. When this is out, I will be playing this fight not to go the distance. One way or the other, (laughs) one of these guys is ill-prepared for this situation. Short notice fight, fought once before. They already know each other. I just think this is a banana peel spot. Either Golem just, you know, uh, something's wrong with James. Uh, He misses weight, short notice. Takes him down, beats him up, or... James catches Golm on the feet, which many people have been able to do, and it never goes well when this man gets clipped on the feet. He just doesn't have the chin to hold up against a power puncher, and that's what James is. James is. So I, I, I like the unders. Yeah, I, I agree. I like the unders. If I'm looking at the side, then yeah, I like James. Mm-hmm. This, he's knocked him out. Um, I mean, he he knocked he. He knocked out Tyrell Fortune. I mean, he, it got ruled a no contest after the fact because of elbows. But make no mistake, he was putting it on him. So mm-hmm. I just really like the – I like James at the plus money. Um, you're right. Golm is – if James gets that chin, Golm is just going to melt. Mm. So one of our favorites, Dakota Ditchva. Uh, we like Lisa Maldon, Malden. Um, I really like Lisa Malden because I correctly – called the big upset against Helen Peralta back mm-hmm. in the day. Yeah. Uh, if back. you remember that one. So I called Malden once on an underdog and that'll, that'll be it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, ditch of you, you go. We love ditch She's a killer and she looks like she's getting better. Doesn't she? You know, MMA has a habit of these, these good looking fighters. They push them. You know, Paige Van Zandt, they had no problem slapping a bunch of makeup on Ronda and trotting her out there. And Haley look, Cohen. Haley Cohen. Look, here's the thing. Ditch of us a fighter. Born yeah. and bred. Born and bred. Her mother is a Muay Thai world champion. Time's over. This girl has grown up fighting. This girl can fight. She may be a pretty face, but she can fight, and she can do damage. Her, she's got amazing length for this weight class. Just There's nothing that she does bad. Now, that being said, she hasn't been tested by the elite of the elite yet. But that's not 6-3 and three, Lisa Malden. It's just not. This is ditch of a, this is ditch of a early. I would say the under one and a half is a fantastic play. Um, I think she gets Malden out. Would you like to talk about Lisa Malden at face-offs? I love you I describe mean, her, I mean, her I, mentality. I, I mean, Malden looked ter- just terrified. Um, mm-hmm. 
she just looked like she just knew what was up. And the other thing is Ditchova looks like she's added a little bit of muscle. Her frame looks a little bit better. Um, there's pretty good video of her. Uh, was she, where's she at? Is she at American Top Team? Where's she at? Yeah, she went to – so she started training in the States. So she's American Top Team um, in Florida she's, now. And I, she's I, just I, training with great coaches now. She was in London. Like, oh, great. Now we're going to get yeah. her real elite training? Oh, my yeah. gosh. Yeah. So um, so I, I, I predicted that she would beat Helen Peralta because I watched Helen Peralta get taken down and mm -hmm. not do well. And so Malden can do that at a low level. We watched her beat uh, Dirty Dez, uh, Rear Naked Choke. First round, again, on the ground. She's not going to get Ditchova down. It's like no. she's going to she's gonna try and come in, and Ditchova is going to absolutely sting her with jabs, and then she's going to back up and just going to be a, a sitting target. Mm -hmm. It's Ditchova all day. I like that they're bringing Ditchova along kind of slow. Um, let's just, you know, you know, bring her up and let's let's like get her a bunch of fights and everything. But uh, just Ditchova by finish is minus three sixty. What a great parlay piece because she's yeah. like minus what twenty eight hundred just to win, but you can get minus three sixty. That, in my opinion, is the parlay piece of the card because, I like agree. you said, she needs she, you need the points. Remember, the points. this is a tournament. <laughs> this is not about winning. This yeah. is about winning with style and winning quick because mm -hmm. if something weird happens, like we've we've seen it where like guys have points or fighters have points and all of a sudden their opponent drops out and they don't have a fight. Yeah. And, and you're like, well, yeah. wait a minute. Now, now everyone in my division has three fights and I have two. So you need to accumulate those points early while you're healthy at ditch about minus 360, I think is just a, I, what a great parlay piece. So yeah, and she, she's well aware of the situation as well. She, yes. like I said, she understands the assignment. If you watch all the lead up <laughs> videos, she knows what she has to go out here and do to become the number one seed in a division with Tyler Santos and Liz Carmouche, or else she's going to get stuck fighting one of those two girls in the next, you know, she doesn't want to be fighting one of them round one of the playoffs. No. She wants to be fighting Lisa Malden again <laughs> as the sixth seed. Right? <laughs> that's what you want in this tournament. It sounds cutthroat, but that's the way it's built. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she might want to fight Juliana Velasquez. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> that, would, that, would, that would be one. So let's move on to Liz Carmouche and Juliana Velasquez. Uh, it's not the fight we wanted to see. It's the fight we needed to see. Juliana Velasquez has lost two in a row to Liz Carmouche. Uh, you know Liz Carmouche very well. Let's, uh, you want to give her a little background on her? And, um, yeah, we'll break down this fight here. But, yeah, yeah we love Liz Carmouche. If you're not, uh, if you're not an old school, old school, way back, uh, you know, MMA fan, you'd forget that Liz Carmouche was in the first women's MMA fight in the UFC. Hmm. Okay, so she's the, the, the first one. Um, really never got appreciated for what she was in the UFC. Everybody focused on Ronda and, you know, the rest of it. Um, look, she's built a hell of a career for herself over in Bellator. She's fought everybody they put in front of her. She's been active. Her skill set on the ground is fantastic. She's tough. Um, again, she understands the assignment. She is the only fighter that I have heard since this merger in an interview say that the style of fighting changes in PFL because you can't use elbows. She is the only fighter I have heard actually voice that, and I've been screaming that from the rafters since this merger, is how are the Bellator fighters going to adapt to not being able to elbow in the tournament fights? You can't use elbows in the tournament fights. So that tells me she's focused, she's ready to go, she wants the money. She's never made this much money in her career. She, she flat out said it. She's 2-0. Against this girl, I mean, I, I just, I think it's Liz. We, how could you not like Liz? She is undoubtedly an MMA Hall of Fame fighter who just does not get the recognition because she wasn't in the UFC her whole career. Um, she's a little bit older. I know they say it's hard to beat somebody three times, but, you know, uh, Juliana Velasquez is not a, a world beater either. W what's your take on Velasquez? I would also point out that Liz Carmouche's last loss was to Valentina Shevchenko. Yeah, that's another one. <laughs> that's that's the, <laughs> in a decision. Like mm -hmm. in 2019 when Shevchenko yeah. was, you know, at her prime. Uh, it, Carmouche's former military, is that right? Yes, correct. Dude, she's so tough. Uh, like, like, So where's Velasquez's advantage, I guess, is 
is is where I go. It's not striking. It's not, it's not on the ground. It's certainly not on the ground. <laughs> and, you know, you look at who she's beat. Keel Holtz, split decision. That fight was greasy at best. Mm -hmm. Now you're back to 2020. McFarland, she wins. Bruna Ellen, uh, Christina Williams, and then she gets step up in competition and she gets finished by Carmouche. And what I love, Carmouche, okay, yeah, she's 40. Round four, finish. Um, you know, uh, Carmouche submits her and you know what's interesting here is Velasquez you know she tried to get a fight in the fall this is it's a long layoff we're, yeah. we're a year and what four months year and yeah. five months almost here and uh Carmouche uh cardio is not an issue for me toughness is not an issue for me making a dumb mistake is not an issue for me I just don't really see I mean leg kick TKO in round five in her last one, and we watched that one. She just brutalized. Oh, beat the brakes was, off her. It, it wasn't even really that competitive. And, that's, and that was her best friend. So this girl's <laughs> got true. killer instinct, that's too, right. as well. That's here. right. It's, that's yeah. right. So not only does she win, she finishes. It's Carmouche. Uh, we love Carmouche uh, in this one. She has shown absolutely no signs of slowing down. So mm -hmm. it's Carmouche pretty easily, right? I, I think it's however she wants it. Now, again, she acknowledged in her interview that you need to get the finish. I worry a little bit about this changing the way she fights. I don't want her to come out too reckless, but I also think that Carmouche is totally happy with a round two finish. So I think there's gotta be some cautiousness in the first round yep. for her to just get squared away and settle into the fight and then she should take over. Look, if she gets on top, it's gonna be all she wrote. Vel yeah. Velasquez doesn't have the ability to defend. Now we get into the interesting ones in terms of some of these lines and some of these matchups here. So real quick, guys, if you guys put, could just uh, take time, hit the like button, leave us a comment, tell us what you like about uh, this card. If you got any best bets, um, let us know if you want us to break anything else down um, for this. If you have any questions about the PFL format, yes, let us please. know um, because it's really, really important for you to understand that. Um, I, I, I got to knock PFL. They do an absolutely horrific job of explaining it. Absolutely horrific. <laughs> you go to their website, you would not You would barely even know what, what's mm -hmm. going on with it. So if PFL, if you're watching, could you give just a little explanation or a PDF, <laughs> a JPEG, a ping, anything, and then just put it on social media so we understand a little bit? So, um, yeah. All right, so let's get to Colts off and... Vassell here. So we've got Goltsov, who is now minus 135, Vassell plus 114. I'm going to let you take this one first, and then I'll tell you what I think of this one. So what do you make about Goltsov and Vassell? we got pretty close odds on this fight. I've heard a lot of strong takes about Vassell, um, and I get it. He's been on a run. Not the best competition, 40 years old, built like an Adonis, I will say that. Yep. Absolutely built, but just not ever been impressed with him. It's a we always talk about the strength of heavyweight divisions, and that Bellator always has been the weakest heavyweight division, absolutely weakest. And you could even say the same thing about their light heavyweight. It's always been weak. It's been old, washed up fighters. Um, just not impressed. He's great on the feet. Get it. Serviceable ground game, get it. Is he outstanding anywhere? No. I, I don't believe that any part of his game is elite. Um, and at that age, we know it's heavyweight. I know they can last a while, but you never know when it's going to fall off. And it's not about your physique. Czech Congo looked like an Adonis his whole career, but man, when he went, he went. It, it doesn't matter. So not really high on Vassell. I'm just really not. And I've heard everybody, I haven't heard except one person picking Dennis Golsoff. That's it. So it scares me when everybody's on one side. I will tell you right now, I am on Goldsoff. I You're love Goldsoff. Yeah, I, <laughs> I like Goldsoff a ton here. Um, so what? Uh, he lost to D'Elia in 2021, and he got knocked out by Renan Ferreira, who's going to knock out uh, – it's getting ready to knock out uh, – what's his name? The guy that just got – Torched in boxing. Ngano. <laughs> Ngano. Yeah. Yeah. Ren Ferrer is going to knock out Ngano. You heard it here first. So, uh, I mean, Goldsoft, 
Uh, he knows the assignment. He gets it. I mean, Jordan Heidemann, round one. DeCastro, <laughs> round one. Cesar Freire, round one. Uh, Maurice Green. This was one of those weird ones where you had to know the format. Mm-hmm. You had to know the format of the PFL. Um, so some of these guys, uh, he's not that good. I think Goldsoff is so quirky with the way he gets guys to the ground. It's like it, you just, it just kind of happens. It's it not these look big, like it violent – it's not these huge, <laughs> yes. big running and grab, suplex them down. It's just like they're fighting, they're fighting. Well, Goldsoff has got a hold of them. Oh, down to one knee. Oh, Goldsoff has them in full mount. Oh, there's a choke. Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? You're like, oh, exactly. there's. <laughs> it, it's it's not these big fancy movements. It's it looks like it shouldn't work. Like his outside trip takedown works every time, but it just his hands are never in the right spot. He's just good at it. He's good at it. And then we saw face-offs. He's much taller. The cell's going to have to be punching up, which, you listen, no, we can have. But I like Goldsov a lot. I haven't, like, what, am I supposed to knock Goldsov for getting knocked out by, by Ferreira? Like, no. Yeah. So I I watch, I've, I've watched Vassell, and I know he's got these finishes, but, like, I, I don't want to say, like, like one-trick pony, but I just don't think he's, a, I don't think he's as diverse with his weapons as Goldsoff is, I, I just like if you're if you're telling me like like who can win by a bunch of different ways, I think Goldsoff can. Um, Vassell just kind of strikes me as just power, and that's about it. And you get him out of his element, and I think he he struggles quite a bit. So um, well, also point to bring uh, you're 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 right on there. Uh, look at look at his three losses that he had there, and this is what happens when fighters go on runs. I mean, yeah. he loses to Ryan Bader, loses to Phil Davis, loses to Valentin Moldovsky. All legitimate fighters, right? Then he gets fed Sergei Karatanov, who was, I believe, 43 or 44 at the time. Okay? Ronnie Marks is nobody to be special at all. Gets that finished. Tyrell Fortune, not an impressive fighter. We were going to have a bet against Tyrell Fortune this yes, week. Yes, we were. Um, Tim Johnson, I want to say that was his retirement fight. And now he also wins against Valentin Moldovsky, who we're going to talk about in a minute, who has his list of concerns. So, yeah. supposed to fight Ryan holes. Bader for the title. Now you got to fight a guy who's hungry and been doing this. So, I'm I'm liking Goldsoft, but I, I haven't bet it yet. There's no no actual physical bet, but I'm with yeah, you. Yeah, you don't need. I'll a stand on the piece. island with you. Yeah, me. you don't need a parlay piece with it. Or if you want it, if you wanted, if you do like Goldsoft like me, I throw a ditch of a. By finish, and now all of a sudden you're grabbing plus money on, well, on gold. gold great solve. point. You could take this fight not to go the distance. We've seen this in the PFL heavyweight division. These guys know they need to finish. Because That's there's going to be a lot of finishes. So either way, one of these guys, I think, doesn't see the scorecards. Yeah, this ain't uh, Blagoy. Uh, yeah. Even, even yeah. off, <laughs> it's going to be quite the opposite. So unders, and then, yeah, like I said, I like gold soft. And if you do like gold soft, take him by finish. Mm-hmm. There you go. There's a, there's a, there's another way to to kind of increase uh, the odds on that one. So uh, we do have plays up at wagertalk.com. PFL is a really really good money maker. If you have not been betting on uh, on PFL, there's there's money to be made, especially in these early weeks. You were you were you were talking. We were talking about this about in the first few weeks when everyone like the scorecards are clean as far as like the points for the tour. That's when you get the best like the most finishes mm-hmm. once you get once you get later on in the tournament you kind of don't know well, if they're nursing injuries or whatever so you we like going hard and heavy in the first couple weeks yep i agree yeah, all right that, that's where the, the the finish props are good yeah absolutely so let me look up Goltz off here by finish yeah you can get him by finish at plus 130 there you go <laughs> love it in the heavyweight division love it yeah uh, Anta, uh, Anti Dalia and Valentin Moldovsky. You mentioned it. I got so many questions about Moldovsky. I like Dalia a lot in this one. And then we get the massive line movement. This this one mm-hmm. really really confuses me. <laughs> Dalia was yeah. a slight favorite, and now t- and just today, now all of a sudden he's plus one thirty. So I mentioned line movement about how you know my okay minus four fifty down to minus two seventy very much concerns me. Um, when you have somebody that's like minus 200, it moves to like minus 160, not that concerned. Holy cow, when you get someone that's a favorite and then it moves to a plus 130, that is like mm. they know of an injury. 
the Billy Q uh, situation against the law, which played out exactly what the line, the line told us a story and the line was completely right. And then face-offs, Delia is bigger. Huge. It just huge. Like, so what is up with the line movement? Are we missing something? I love Delia and, you know, look at Moldowski, like loses to Bader. We have an eye poke. Uh, he loses well, to Vassell and like, I don't, I don't know. The line is the, again, the line is what's scaring me because skill wise and size wise, I love to Lee in this one. Again, look at these Bellator, this Bellator heavyweight division. Just look at it. Roy Nelson, <laughs> Tim <laughs> Roy Johnson <laughs> again, Ryan Bader again. I don't even Steve know this Maui guy. Steve was a DQ from an eye, pu- eye poke. I, yeah, speaking of not, poke, this guy's nickname eye candy is eye was candy. not well. <laughs> he was not was great. Okay? That was his last yeah. fight. That was his last fight. Gets knocked out by Vassell. And here's the thing with him. He doesn't have a good gyro. He, he doesn't take shots well. Period. Uh, he's had a lot of fights. And fights in the heavyweight division. It just, it scares me to bet on this chin in the heavyweight division. I can't because these guys that he has fought in Bellator have just been not all there. I think mm-hmm. that the Lee has fought the much better level of competition, much better. And that's saying a lot because it's, it's not a, you know, a uh, laundry list. I mean, look at this guy, he beat, beat Hannah Ferreira, mm-hmm. you know, a guy who we're, we're talking is amazing. Yeah. There's a lot of repeat fights as well, but a lot of these guys didn't have some miles on them, you know, beat Dennis Goldsoff. You know, former champion. Yeah. I mean, what do you feel about Delia? Advantages, disadvantages? Well, point out his two losses. He lost to Bruno Capaloza, who was on the juice. He was. That was juice. I mean, that, that's just not Capaloza. even disputable anymore. Capaloza nope. was a big part of it. By the way, how, how's Capaloza looked? <laughs> After the juice? Great. The juice. Great for us. <laughs> not, yeah, not very good. So. You know, we have the Maurice Green win. Uh, the well, I, for, I just I like his striking. I like his size. And Moldovsky, I just has not impressed. I, I see a lot of holes in his game. And, you know, Dali is not the fastest guy in the world, but Moldovsky hasn't looked fast in his, yeah, in his last I, I, couple of fights. So it's not like Moldovsky, oh, you, speed. Oh, maybe speed on the outside. And you met Dali looked good at faceoffs, look a little bit looked slimmer. Look trim, right? Yeah. He looked trim. He looked lean. Um, Look, the guy throws heat, man. He's yeah. got power. We know that. Yeah. And you can hit him with a shovel, and he's going to keep coming forward. I mean, he, the dude's got a head like a refrigerator. He's just a, he's a monster. Um, yeah. But again, the line move scares the hell out of you. Yeah. And we mentioned, um, we mentioned like, the points and, like, some of the uh, – Delia's one that got screwed out of his fight against Jorgen De Castro got canceled. He didn't get, a, mm-hmm. he didn't get another opponent. So he, like, mathematically couldn't move forward. Even though he did nothing wrong, he just wins all these fights, but the numbers didn't go his way. So I like Delia here at plus money, except I don't know where this. I don't know where the line movement's coming from. I don't know where the money's coming from. I can't find I get, anything. I can't find an injury. No I don't get it. It's another no distance. No distance. It just, it, I think you're really safe taking these heavyweight fights to end, except for... The Blagoy fight. I'm not going to bet on Blagoy being finished. But what I think a lot of people might be overlooking with the Lehigh, and I'm going to make sure that we say this right now before you guys, if you haven't watched PFL, know. But that fight against Maurice Green. So Andy brought up a great point. He gets his fight canceled against Jorgen De Castro. So he gets one fight that season. He needs a first-round finish yeah. again in the Maurice Green fight. That fight, go back and watch. That starts. The Lehigh is... <laughs> literally running after him and Maurice Green who doesn't know how to count (laughs) thought that all he needed to do was survive the fight and he was in the playoffs well he had to win the fight so for three rounds Maurice Green ran away from Deliha and Deliha for three rounds was throwing haymakers and just next tr- thing you know, doing they, whatever they, he could, man. Whatever like, he could. I mean, trying to trip him. He was doing everything, <laughs> everything he could. Almost got it once or twice. Maurice Green after the fight celebrates, saying he's in the tournament. And then all of a sudden, they look over, and go, "No, you messed up. You're out by one point." So bad. So it, it just it was a weird situation. So the only thing that I can think that 
people are looking at a fight going the distance against Maurice Green and are a little worried. That's not what happened. Okay, no, it <laughs> was not what it happened. was a very specific circumstance. You're right. That fight yes. started. Dalia just runs right at him. Yep. Any other fight, like it would have been over. But <laughs> Green just run around and <laughs> and of all people, of all people in Maurice's in Maurice Green's corner, that screwed this up. John Jones, the goat. <laughs> John Jones yep. was in Maurice Green's corner, and between the two of them, they couldn't add to six. <laughs> like, guys, you, you each have ten fingers. <laughs> One, yeah. two, three. It was a wild, wild thing. But you're right. It, that fight took, that went to – right after the first round, you knew Delia was – it was, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, he couldn't get it. But, yeah, I th you're right. Maybe people are looking at that going, well, he couldn't even finish Maurice Green. You, I, you know what's interesting? This plus money – to not go the distance. You can grab plus 120 on this one. Both these I, guys I, got it. Yeah, in this in this division, you have to get finishes. You have, you have to. to. You cannot win by decision throughout the season. So there's it's going to be aggressive. I think maybe that's the play. Plus 120, not go the distance. You don't I am even totally need to do fine anything. taking that in the PFL. It's it's totally different than the UFC heavyweight division. Yeah. With, the, with the middling heavyweights. These guys know they need to finish. Yeah, yeah. So... All right, so that is PFL, and this is on Thursday, so make sure you get your bets in. Quick recap, we really like Bryce Meredith over Ty Johnson. Uh, we're kind of split on this one. Uh, mm -hmm. Jim really likes Lu Lucas Brennan. Ah, I'll take a little sprinkle on the huge underdog and Demetri Ivy. We both are lockstep that we like Jenna Bishop. On paper, Watanabe should win. The line movement just terrifies us. <laughs> Don't know what's going on with that one. Maori and Popov. Do we have a... Knocked over the distance. We said over. over, over in this yeah. One. Over, over two and a half. Good bet. Yeah. This Fight one starts round uh, three, round two, if you can get yeah. any kind of lines like that. I see it as a grapple fest. Yeah. Uh, Tyler Santos, by ever which way she wants. Uh, mm -hmm. Even off. It's an even off fight. Over. Mm -hmm. uh, Goldman James. I kind of like a sprinkle on James, but we like the under on this one. Ditchova by ever by whatever method uh, she wants, just take her to win inside the distance. We like Carmouche probably inside the distance for the third straight time against Velasquez. Goltsoff and Vassell, I really like Goltsoff by finish, and then uh, but again unders on these two heavyweight fights. Uh, Delia and Moldovsky, the plus one twenty is really really good. So. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, that is going to do it for us. We're going to be back uh, later this week with our UFC. Again, more crazy line movements. Um, we'll just try and break down the fights, and we got to take a look at these line movements because it's a big, big deal. Make sure you're looking at these lines before you're placing some of these bets. We've got one guy that was like minus 200 now, it looks like, by Friday, and the UFC is going to be the underdog. Mm -hmm. So uh, pretty wild stuff. You normally don't see that in these big divisions. So let's get uh, PFL, PFL season off to a great start. Official plays are at wagertalk.com. Hit the like button. Leave us a comment. Tell us if you agree or disagree and what your best bet is. Good luck on your plays. We'll see everyone later. Take care.